God tonight for he is a way maker <laughs> he is a miracle worker and I, I know we've already prayed but there may be somebody here today you you just need to know that God can work this thing out you see part of recharge is for I want you to feel free to make your way to the altar because see there's some things that are just going to take place and just going to be released right here at this altar in fact, I love it with the way Jesus says. He says, come unto me, all ye who labor and who are heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. He says, well, take my yoke upon you. He says, for what? My burden is what? See, I tell you here tonight that God is a moving God. And some things are only going to come about, the breakthrough is only going to come about. And that is through prayer. And if there's something I want you to get more than anything, it is to develop a stronger prayer life. Because I can preach, <laughs> but that ain't going to change it. <laughs> I can sit up here and teach, but that's not going to change it. What's going to change it is when you finally take yourself to the master and you lay before him prostrate and watch how God begins to move in your life. And so we're going to pray right now. We're going to pray for each and every one of you because I just believe that God is going to break some things in your life. So God, we thank you right now. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for all who made their way here to the altar tonight. God, you know what it is that they need. And God, we're just crazy enough to believe that God, that you are a way maker in our lives. That God, that you are a miracle worker in our lives. God, I don't know who needs to be touched. I don't know who needs to be healed. God, I don't know what their situation is. But God, I'm just crazy enough to believe that, God, that you're going to do something magnificent here tonight. That, God, that you're going to bless men and women. God, that there's going to be an anointing that's going to fall upon this place. That, God, that the devil is going to start shaking in his boots. God, strongholds are going to be broken. God, we just ask right now for you to perform the miracles and the releases, God, that are needed to bring about the real breakthrough. For, God, we believe with all the depths of our hearts that, God, that you are a way maker that God, that you're going to do it. God, you said it, and God, we believe it. And all of those who believe that God's going to bring about a breakthrough, somebody shout from the top of your lungs, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Time. For you wow. are here, and 
thankful for what the Lord is doing. We had an awesome, awesome time this past Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. Come on and give God praise. We had beyond uh, record attendance and Dare to Imagine's history in four years this past Sunday. Uh, we had over 400 people at the uh, 9 a.m. worship service. Come on and give God praise. It's probably pushing uh, close to 450 and then the Lord blessed us to have around 350 at the second service and we praise God for that and um, uh, we had one to join at the nine and that was our brother Tim Kitchens come on give Tim a round of applause our keyboards and then it looked like the heavens just opened up at the 11 o'clock worship service amen Amen. If you join at the 11 o'clock service, come on and give yourselves a round of applause. We thank God for them. Uh, around 21 persons joined church. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. So we thank the Lord for how he is moving here at Dare to Imagine Church. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I just want to cover a few things here, beloved. Uh, this is our recharge service. And this whole purpose of $97,000 to go, but we are believing God that God's going to make that happen. Amen. Amen. So as I'm, right now I'm going to ask for us to get ready to give unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank God you may take your seats. We thank God tonight for his spirit and for his presence this evening. We thank God for how he continues to bless in the midst of there to imagine and he continues to remind us that he is God and that we are his children. There's a word tonight from the Lord that I want to share with you. If you'll turn with me to the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 7, the book of Acts chapter 7, and I want to look at, begin at verse 23, Acts chapter 27, excuse me, 7, verse, begin at verse 23, and there you will find these words. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. But Moses thought that, this, that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a bush, burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight and he went over to get a closer look. He heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to set them free. Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses, somebody say this is the same Moses that they had rejected with the words, who made you ruler and judge? He was sent to be their ruler and deliverer by God himself through the angel who appeared to him in a bush. I want to talk this evening from the subject of I'm dirty, but God can use me. 
text says there in verse 35, it says, this is, I want you to read it with me again, read it aloud. This is the same Moses that they had rejected with the words, who made you ruler and judge? He was sent to be their ruler and deliverer by God himself through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. I want to talk tonight from the subject. I believe it's going to bless somebody. I'm dirty, but God can use me. I don't know if you have ever been there when you feel like God has given up on you. I don't know if you have ever been there when you feel like your life has no purpose and your life has no future, and in fact, even your future itself is bleak. I don't know if you have been there when you find yourself in a desert. I don't know if you have been there when everything in your life seemed to be going well and coming together, but for some strange reason, all hell breaks loose in your life. I don't know if you have been there when things in your life that you had dreamed for and had believed would come to pass seem now to fall apart right before your very eyes. I mean, life was in a real sense in cruise controls. Things were moving according to plan. Blessings were overflowing. And all of a sudden, because of one bad move, you f now find yourself in a desert. You know what a desert is, don't you? A desert is an uninhabited place. A desert is a wilderness. A desert is a place where there is no rain or precipitation. Yes, a desert is a dry place. A desert is a hot place. A desert is, in fact, a lonely place. And that's where we find Moses here in this text. For those of you who know your Bible, you will remember that Moses is one of the most prominent biblical figures in the book. Yes, while Abraham is considered to be the father of the faithful and the recipient of God's unconditional covenant of grace to his people, Moses was the man chosen to bring redemption to his people. Yes, God had a specific task for Moses. God had a specific call upon Moses' life. And while many of us, we will recall the different biblical stories, we'll recall the movies that we have seen in which we saw Moses lead the people across the Red Sea. We saw Moses raise his rod and the seas, they began to part and the people walked through on dry ground. While we have seen these different images of Moses, I dare want to share with you today that Moses' journey is not how it didn't start the way that it ended. In fact, when you think about the life of Moses, you begin to find out that Moses came from a peculiar situation. Yes, the Bible tells us there in, in chapter 1 of Exodus that we, when we first encounter Moses, that we learn that after the patriarch of the Israelite people, Joseph, had rescued his family from the great famine and situated them in the land of Goshen in Egypt, the text shares with us that the descendants of Abraham lived in peace for several generations. Yes, they lived in peace for several generations until there was a new king who came to town in Egypt. Yes, he was a king, what they call Pharaoh. The text says there in Exodus that this king, this Pharaoh, did not know Joseph. Because this new king did not know Joseph, the Bible tells us that this new king dealt shrewdly with the Hebrew children. And beloved, I'm here to tell you that sometimes you can be in the midst of your promise. And sometimes you can be where God wants you to be. Sometimes you can be in the very place where God is about to bless in your life. You see, when you look at your Bible and you really begin to understand this text, you see, Joseph was actually already in the promised land, but a famine came. And because the famine came, he decided to go to a place where there was not a famine, but the place that he ended up taking his people to during the midst of the famine was in Egypt and what ended up happening is that the people even though they had plenty to eat the Bible shares with us they ended up becoming slaves you see sometimes the very place that you think is going to be a blessing for you can be the place where you become a slave in your life oh I wish I had somebody in here this evening and so the text is a reminder to us that sometimes you just got to learn how to endure 
your famine. Sometimes you just got to learn how to endure your dry season. Sometimes you got to learn how to deal with the fact of not having anything in your life. There's so many of us, we want God to begin to bless. We want God to begin to move. But sometimes God just wants to know, can you make it when no rain is coming in your life? Sometimes God just wants to know, can you make it when you're going through a desert season in your life? And so it's here, it's here when we look in this text that we come in contact with this brother by the name of Moses because Moses is really in a real sense, he's dealing with all kind of issues and God is using him and God's going to use his testimony to be a reminder to somebody, even though I'm dirty, God can still use me. You see, it's here, it's here, right here in the text that because the people of Egypt, Israel, they ended up in Egypt, that they ended up becoming slaves. And the Bible shares with us that they became slaves. And because they became slaves, Pharaoh, he began to try to punish them and he began to try to force them with labor. Had them build in cities like Pithom and Ramses and store cities for Pharaoh. But the Bible said there's something that's so powerful here in the text. It says, but the more they were oppressed the more they multiplied and spread. So the Isra Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and work them ruthlessly. You see, I don't know about you, but that's shouting news right there, that even when people try to do me wrong, uh, God keeps on blessing. That even when people try to stomp on my head, that God keeps making me raise my head and giving him the praise. You see, the devil doesn't like the fact that you are here tonight. The devil doesn't like the fact that you came to give God the glory. But I want you to know tonight no matter what you've been dealing with for the past few days at work that the more you are oppressed uh, the bible says you gonna multiply you see some of us think that we're in this season right now but i want you to know that god's using this season to be able to bring about a new blessing that's going to take place in your life the more they were oppressed the more they began to multiply yes since pharaoh pharaoh could not curb the growth and the strength of the Hebrews, the Bible says that he sought to kill, to kill, to put to death all the male children born to Hebrew women. Can you imagine the fact that here it is, you are a mother, but now your child is going to be killed? Can you imagine here it is, you have prayed for a male child, but now your male child is now going to be killed? That's what was happening here in the text. And the Bible shares with us that in Exodus, we see Moses' mother attempting to save her son, her child, by placing him in a basket and putting him in the Nile River. Yes, the basket was eventually found by Pharaoh's daughter, and she adopted him as her own. And this is the, the shouting news right here. She adopted him as her own, but then she told one of her servants to go and find one of the Hebrew women and check out how God works. That God went and found uh, Pharaoh, went and found Moses' mother, and she became the one to nurse Moses, even though she gave him up. Oh, that's shouting, that's shouting news right there. Sometimes you can give up something for God, and guess what? God will bring, bring it right back to you. Oh, my God. I wish I had a praying church here tonight. And what I love about this text is that even as Moses is growing, even as he is maturing there in Pharaoh's house, the Bible shares with us that as Moses grew into adulthood, that one day he went out to where his own people were and watched them as they were under forced labor. Moses, the one who had been saved by God, now decides that he wants to become the God's calling him to be the savior. And the text shares with us that he began to empathize with the plight of his people. He began to see their pain. He began to see their struggle. He one day even saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. The Bible says that Moses looked this way and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. Yes, this was a turning point in Moses' life. It was the beginning of his desert experience. The Bible says the next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fight. And he asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said to him, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as one of the Egyptians, as you killed one of the Egyptians? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. 
The Bible goes on and shares with us that when Pharaoh heard of this, that Moses had killed an Egyptian, that he tried to kill Moses, but Moses flees now for a second time. The first time he fled because his mother put him in the water. This time he flees because he's running for his life. The text shares with us that he ends up in Midian where he sat down by a well. Thus Moses is in his desert. You see, I don't know about you, but there have been moments in my life when I've been in a desert. There have been moments in my life when you can't figure out how you're going to make it. You see, there's some of you who are here tonight. You may be in a desert. You can't find a job. You're in a desert. You can't pay your bills. You're in a desert. You can't keep your lights on. You're in a desert. You can't pay your mortgage or your rent. You're in a desert. You can't find somebody to talk to on the telephone. You're in a desert. You can't find a date to go on. You're in a desert. But it's here, it's here in this text that we encounter this brother by the name of Moses who is in the midst of his desert. And when you look at the text, Exodus does not tell us how long Moses was in the desert. But when we turn here to Acts chapter 7 verse 30, Stephen tells us that Moses was in the wilderness for 40 years. Yes, 40 years Moses was in the desert. 40 years Moses was a fugitive. 40 years Moses was a foreigner in a land. For, was a foreign in a land. Yes, 40 years Moses was in a desert for a long time. And I don't know about you, but 40 years is a long time. 40 years is a long time to be in a desert. 40 years is a long time to be without water or precipitation. 40 years is a long time to be dealing with hot temperatures during the day and cold temperatures during the night. Yes, 40 years is a long time, but that's where God has Moses here in this text. But what I love about this text is that even though Moses had killed the man, even though Moses was a fugitive, even though Moses had, had broken the law, even though Moses had taken somebody's life, even though Moses had, had come to the point into his life where he did not know if God still loved him, the Bible shares with us that that's when God shows up and God God meets Moses right there in the wilderness and the text says right there in Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 says now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law the priest of Midian and he led the flock to a far side of the desert and came to Horeb the mountain of God and there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames from within a bush and Moses saw though the bush was on fire that it did not burn up uh, oh I'm here to tell you tonight to blub it that there is some some powerful news right there for you and me is because when Moses looks at the bush and he sees that the bush is on fire but yet the bush is not burnt up what Moses begins to see is that if the bush can survive the fire oh I wish I had somebody here tonight that if the bush is not burned up then Moses says to himself then maybe God is saying to me that I'm about to give you a second chance you see I know that there are many of us we think that God has given up on us. We think that God has thrown in the towel. We think that God does not care about us. But what I've come to discover about Moses is that even though my life has been raggedy, even though I may have made some mistakes in my life, even though I may not have been the perfect person that God needs me to be, I thank God that God says, even though I'm dirty, I can still use you. You see, there ought to be a few people in here today who can testify that if it had not been for God who was on your side, if it had not been for God giving you a second chance, you don't know where you would be. Is there anybody who can testify? I know that you're saved. I know you got your life together. I know you're a member of Dare to Imagine Church, but can you just take a road down memory lane and remember who you used to be and who you are right now? Is there anybody who can bless the name of the Lord that I thank God that I'm not what I used to be because God's given me a second chance. Yes, it's here. It's here in the text that I get excited because when you look at this text, the power of it is what is said here. It says in verse 30 in Acts chapter 7, it says after 40 years had passed, an angel 
appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. You see, you got to understand, it was 40 years. Moses was 40 years old when he killed somebody. And he was 40 years old when God came to him in a burning, 80 years old when God came to him in a burning bush. He was 40 years old when he killed somebody. And then it took another 40 years, which he was 80 years old, when God came to him when he gave him a second chance. And see, what gives me hope tonight is that what God is really saying to Moses is that you put yourself in the place that you're in. You see, God didn't tell Moses to go to Midian. Moses went himself. And there's some of us who are here tonight, you are in a place and in a position not because God God sent you there. It's because you sent yourself. But I thank God that God loves me so much that God says that I'm tired of you staying where you are. I'm tired of you being down on yourself. And the Bible says that God came to Moses in a burning bush. And this is the shouting news right here. It's because the bush called Moses his name. In other words, what God is saying to you is that I know it's been 40 years, but I still know your name. You see, I like what Destiny Child said. Does anybody know my name? Call me by my name. You see, I'm reminded no matter how much dirt we have experienced in our lives, that God can still use us. I'm reminded of this old story about this farmer. This farmer, this farmer, he was, uh, he had this, this donkey and he, he was tired of the donkey. He decided to give up on the donkey because the donkey wasn't doing what it needed to do. He decided, look, I'm going to bury the donkey. Donkey. I'm going to dig a hole and I'm going to put the donkey in the hole. But something happened after he dug the hole and he put the donkey in the hole and the donkey was still alive. But the farmer started to throw dirt. Watch this now on the donkey. And every time the farmer threw dirt on the donkey, all the donkey would do is shake the dirt off. Uh, the farmer kept on throwing dirt and, and, and the donkey kept shaking it off. And finally, the farmer didn't have any more dirt to throw on the donkey. And next thing you know, the donkey came out of the hole that it was in because it started to shake off the dirt that was on its back. All I came by here to tell somebody, you may be dirty, but you got to... <laughs> shake it off uh, because God can still use you. And I don't know who's here tonight. I don't know who needed to hear this message, but God is saying to you, whatever your past, whatever you have done, that God can use you. The doors of the church are open.